Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, the split to say DIY. And I've been doing some more work on the IR rover robot thing that uh, I talked about like a couple videos ago, mainly with the remote aspect. Uh, as I said in the video, I wanted to do a PCB for uh, this remote that I've breadboarded out here. Basically, just kind of walk you through. We have the analog joystick that is controlling the robot. When this joystick changes direction, it sends a different pulse um, number of pulses to these IR LEDs. Uh, and then that in turn is received by the circuit playground that has an IR uh, receiver on board. And that affects how the motors are pulsing for the wheels, so it changes direction. Uh, and that is being controlled with a Trinket M0, so it's coded in CircuitPython. And we've got the Seesaw add on board Adafruit uh, as well. So my goal with the PCB for this, as, as handy as it is to have this breadboard that I can just kind of grab onto, <laughs> um, for the PCB, I basically want to have two boards, which I've never really done before. Uh, so I thought it'd be kind of interesting to do a video about it. Um, basically have headers so that the Trinket and the Seesaw can just plug in and then I would use a standard like footprint to get the joystick on there as well so that'd be one board and then the second board would be for the LEDs as much as the array is cool you can just solder the LEDs onto their footprint on the board make it a little bit more stable uh, so that's what I'm going to do um, but I still want the LEDs to be facing forward like this so basically the way that the board's going to be think of it as like a flat plane for this, but then another board is going to be standing up like this with the LEDs in front and that will plug in with headers so that it's kind of like plugging in so you kind of have this L-shaped uh, final contraption. So I'm going to take you into Eagle, show you how I did that. Um, also uh, thanks to David Watts, I am a little bit more competent with Eagle now. Basically when I released my um, video on my badge design and I was very open about how, you know, I had struggled a bit with the design, how to work it and everything. He took the time to make a video, um, basically like a video message to me uh, that was kind of giving me some tips and tricks on Eagle that I just wasn't aware of that really helped to clean up my board design process in general. Uh, and I really appreciate it. Um, he could have posted it as a an actual video and he didn't he and he was very kind in his feedback too he wasn't a jerk or anything like that he wasn't condescending he was just very nice and just wanting to help so thank you david his tips here really helped me out with this board and i want to pass them on to you as well uh so the first of the two boards that i did for this and these have been sent off to fab already with osh park shout out to drew from osh park like can we have a drew from osh park appreciation day i feel like the open source community should do that so this is the board that will have the LEDs. As you can see, we're still doing seven LEDs. I arranged them the same as they are in this array, which uh, if you missed the last video, I talked about the arrays. Mahit Boyt uh, has a great jig for that. Um, definitely check out his work as well. Uh, so fairly simple what we got going on here. Uh, they're just kind of in the little flower formation. And then I've, I'm throwing a resistor. It's gonna be a really low value resistor, just so I, I kind of so I don't get yelled at, but it's probably gonna be like one ohm just to like have it on there. And then we have the header slots, like I talked about. So basically I'm gonna do right angle headers coming out of here. Uh, so then they'll be able to plug into the other board uh, like so. Um, now let's go to the schematic. You may notice I don't have wires going everywhere like crazy, which is good. The main thing that I took away from David's video was how to do a better schematic in Eagle. And that is by using the name tool. And I'm actually gonna do a new component to demonstrate it because these are all set here. So let's just throw in an LED. Doesn't matter which LED, but we can go to the Adafruit library because their footprints are very normal. Let's get a five millimeter LED, okay. Boom. Um, and now let's add some signals to it, like so. And so right now these would be air wires, right? And previously, how I thought it worked, or I couldn't figure out how to not have it work like this, uh, was that you had to connect everything almost like you were doing an actual breadboard in Eagle. I think probably because I'm more used to fritzing. Um, uh, what you can actually do, though, is you can take your naming 
tool, which is this right here, click on your lead there. Now see these names? If I put ground two is what I was using over here. Yes. Um, if I go to the schematic and I go here, you can see that there's an air wire happening and it knows that those are supposed to be connected, which is awesome. And it neatens everything up so beautifully. Uh, so like I can have my little headers down here and show that that's connected to ground, which will be connected to ground on the LEDs up here and LED master here, LED master here. It's, it's life changing. It's life changing. And you can see it more and the other board that we'll look at in a second, but it just, that is really just amazing. Uh, so if you're a noob with Eagle like me and you're just starting to make PCBs, definitely use the name tool when you're um, d using your nets on your components. It just, it it's a whole new world. It's a whole new world. Um, so now let's look at the main board. Here is my uh, thing. So let me talk a little bit about how I design this in general. First of all, um, since I'm using Adafruit parts, they are obviously open source. They publish everything. Uh, so I was able to download the Eagle files for the Trinket, M0, the Seesaw board, and the joystick, since this is a breakout. And what I did, I downloaded them, and in my project folder, I have a folder, Adafruit parts, and that's where I put the board files. And you can bring these in to Eagle by going to File, Import, Eagle Drawing. If I go back, let's bring in the, the trinket. And then you have the drawing. But more importantly, if I go to the board view here, here's the board, and there's my board. Uh, here you can see these are the trinket holes, and by bringing in the trinket board and also the seesaw board, I was able to line up the headers so that when the board arrives, it'll be the correct footprint. Uh, and I've done that before when I made this actually. Um, if you remember the kind of keyboard shield for Arduino, I brought in an Arduino board and then lined up the headers so that they were spaced properly. And that's just like a really easy way if you're working with other development boards or anything where you like need to know the spacing on pins, it just makes it really simple. You can then like delete that footprint afterwards so that you're not dealing with it later. Uh, but just to get the spacing, it makes a huge difference. So these are my trinket headers. These are the headers for the seesaw. I labeled them trinket left, trinket right, seesaw left, seesaw right. Uh, I use the naming conventions here again for the pins, made a huge difference. Uh, and then this is the joystick. Um, what I did with this, since Adafruit has a breakout board, I removed the breakout board portion in the, in the board view so that I was left with just the footprint for the joystick, and then that's how I labeled things up there. So that's how I did that. And let's go to this board view. Now, I love a curve trace, so I used curve traces here. Uh, and then originally, the other board that I showed you before with the LEDs was in the same file. And by doing that, I was able to line up the headers where the LED board is going to be plugging in so that I was able to line them up on the grid. Actually, let me see if I can bring it in. Yeah, here we are. That LED is there that I added in. So ignore the LED. <laughs> but you can see that the headers are going to line up. They're the right spacing and everything. So that's how that works. And then since I was going to be sending them out to Fab, and when I go for Oshpark, I like to just upload the board file rather than dealing with Gerbers. I copied the LED board into a new Eagle file so I'd be able to export it. So that's what I did with that. Uh, now the other part of this board is I'm going to have a JST connector for a LiPo battery. Um, it's a right angle connector that's going to be on the back of the board. Everything else is going to be on top. Uh, and so that's on the back here. Uh, and I, I basically kept ground on the back with the exception of one trace right here. Everything else is on the back. And there is a reason why I did that that I can demonstrate for you right now. The other thing from David's tips and tricks tutorial that he sent me uh, was the use of ground planes. Uh, I have to admit, I didn't even know that that existed. I didn't know it was a thing. Um, so basically it makes your board look more professional and like a little bit more stable and everything like that. And I'll leave some resources down in the description in case you want to know more about that because I'm, I'm not at a point where I can really explain it to you 
in probably the most technical detail, but basically um, what you do is you use the polygon tool right here and you draw a rectangle around your board. And you should do this before you do your traces. So you draw your polygon, then do all your routing and everything. And once you're all done with the routing, what you do is you right click your polygon and you use rat's nest. And there's your ground plane. And you can see that like places where it's not a ground connection, there is isolation around the trace. And it's blue because it's on the back of the board. It's the bottom layer in Eagle. And like the battery connection, you can see there's isolation for the positive lead and everything like that. So it's really awesome. It looks really cool once it happens. But you can see why you'd want to do your all your routing and stuff first. So then once you do your rat's nest, it will do the isolation and everything. But ground plane, really cool. Uh, <laughs> much better design, much more stable. Definitely recommend it. So I sent both these boards off to Oshpark. Uh, they'll be coming probably in about a week. Uh, and I did put mounting holes in here on both boards so that I'll be able to bring these into Fusion 360 since Eagle and Fusion 360 talk to each other and I'll be able to kind of design a housing around the boards and I'll probably do another video on that aspect uh, only because I've never done that before. I've never brought a board in specifically to make a housing for it that I have designed. Um, I've used it to reference measurements before but never to like kind of do an enclosure that will be functioning around the fact that also the joystick will be a part of this and the LEDs. So that should be interesting. And I'm still not 100% sure on the housing type I'm gonna do either. So I need to do some sketching on that and everything, so. Uh, but I think that's gonna do it for this video. Just wanted to kind of share some new things I've learned in Eagle that I've implemented into my design process. Hopefully it'll be helpful for you, especially if you're a noob like me and you're, you're just kind of figuring things out as you go. <laughs> Thank you again to David uh, for telling me that. Um, you know, the internet can be a dark place when you're learning something or you openly admit, like, I don't know exactly what I'm doing, but I'm just kind of doing it anyway. Um, so I uh, appreciate the feedback. Uh, and if only the whole internet could be that kind. I'll have links down in the description to talk a little further about some of the things I discussed. But thank you for watching. Consider subscribing for more content like this. I have a website now, blitzcityDIY.com. Link down in the description. Check it out if you want. I will have some stuff on there that I don't necessarily share in other places. I've started kind of like a little blog thing on there. So check it out if you're interested. Um, but until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.